Good evening. Um, I want to thank you for joining us uh, before curriculum night tonight um, and would like to say a big thank you to Mrs. Newton and Mrs. Cover for putting together this evening. Um, we're going to go through quite a bit of information. Um, so we do already have it posted on the website and I would encourage you as the year progresses if you do have questions um, to please continue to check out the website. We do have everything updated um, from college visits, um, all of our upcoming activities, um, all of it you can see there. Um, also please if you get an opportunity to um, subscribe uh, to our newsletter um, because we do have a section there that Mrs. Newton does fill, fill out twice a month. Um, to ensure that you have the most up-to-date information. Um, so thank you, and without further ado, I will turn the evening over to the student. Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome. As Ms. Asher indicated, I'm Mrs. Newton, and I just wanted to quickly introduce our department. In the counseling department, and um, just so you are aware, we restructured our department last school year so this is the second year in a row we have followed this structure mr imarino who is not here at the moment he works with all current ninth grade students he is primarily involved um, in link crew which is the new student transitional program he also works to schedule all eighth grade students rising ninth grade students and he sees them through the school year and additionally, he is also our point person for testing in the building, so that includes end of course exams, PSAT, SAT, AP, all that good stuff. And then from that point on, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade, Mrs. Cover and I take over. We split the alphabet. I'm responsible for letters A through K. She letters L through Z, and we see kids through all the way until graduation. So that's who we are, and we all work collaboratively to assist and support students. Just so you are aware, um, we certainly recognize that senior year is a very, very exciting time for kids, but it is also an extremely nerve-wracking, stressful time for kids as well. So as Mrs. Cover and I have begun to meet individually with students and in group situations, that is one of the first things that kids will admit to us is how stressed they are, and that is particularly relating to the college process. So not only staying on top of their everyday responsibilities and obligations with schoolwork, extracurriculars, on top of all of that is the college process standardized testing, test prep, essay writing, letters of recommendations, filling out applications. So we realize that this is a challenging time for kids, but we also help them focus on the fact that it's temporary. They really have to push through this first semester of senior year and realize that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And we have a great staff at the high school who will answer any question that a student may have and support them through the process. So just so you are aware as parents, we did present Mrs. Cover and I at the end of last school year to students in classrooms. And then we also provided an additional group presentation to kids last week. So in those presentations, kids, we want to be as transparent as possible and provide kids with very clear guidelines with regard to our expectations and the guidelines that we have in place to essentially effectively support kids throughout the college process. So please know that students have been given a set of guidelines. If for some reason they have misplaced that, it's also available on the high school website as Ms. Asher indicated. So again, students have been provided with this very same information. This should not be news to them at all. We also hosted a uh, quick start to the college application process before school began. In the high school library, we had 60 students who participated. And it was just a nice way for kids before um, all of the responsibilities of schoolwork piled up to get a jump start on their college applications. 
Um, additionally, just so you are aware, and we'll talk about this a couple slides down, we are also providing support for students with regard to their essays and their supplemental writings for colleges. We've partnered with Lacey Domini, who works for Academy Test Prep in town. She is our essay specialist and guru. So in addition to accessing help from teachers, from parents, Mrs. Domini is another layer of support. She is someone that the students can access on Wednesdays. So she will be here throughout the month of September as well as October. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but she's also available for assistance to kids. Also today was our very first college visit. We had Miami of Ohio here in the office this afternoon. We had approximately 15 students who attended that session. We will have several, several more visits from admission representatives throughout September, October, and even into November. That information is pushed through to kids, not only in warning announcements, it's on Naviance. If a student has flagged a particular school as a school they're interested in, they receive an email notification from Naviance. And also, Ms. Rossi and Ms. Asher have created these lovely posters around the building to advertise visits. So this information is definitely available to students. So we talked a little bit about how Mrs. Cover and I are available to support kids. Um, I did want to point something out, and I think this is important to share with parents, and that is with senior year comes the privilege of open campus. So that means students can have that great opportunity to arrive late, leave early, or if they have that middle of the day comments period, they can leave campus. But with that presents some challenges for our office in terms of connecting with kids. So we have over 100 seniors out of a class of 176 who have open campus privileges. So as we have begun to pull kids down to our office to check in with them, to work with them, we're finding that we can't reach them. So if you can, and we reiterated this same information last week to students, please, when it is convenient for them in a timely fashion, encourage them to make an appointment to see us personally, and they all just have to go to Mrs. Hancock, they know who she is, to set up an appointment. Um, I know that kids may have a tendency to prefer to send an email and ask a lot of questions, and we certainly can appreciate that. It's just we think it's more time efficient and effective to meet with kids one-on-one -on -one and answer their questions rather than through email. We like to have that personal connection to kids whenever possible. So please do encourage your students to meet with us in person. So now getting into the college application process a little bit. So um, depending upon the school that your son or daughter may be applying to, there's a variety of application types. It may be through the school specific website. It may be on something called the coalition application, which is relatively new. But typically, kids are using something called the common application, which is an application that can be submitted to multiple, multiple schools. And that's really very popular with our students. This is a newer feature. Last year, they included something called the courses and grades section. And um, Ohio State and Purdue are two of the most popular schools our students are applying to. So if those schools are on their list, they have to completely self-report their transcript. So we just wanted parents to know that's an additional feature on the common application and that can take a lot of time. If students need a copy of their transcript, and many of them have already obtained a copy, if they need something else, obviously just stop in the office and we can provide that to students. I talked a little bit about the accessibility of Mrs. Domini. Just so parents are aware, how does your son or daughter sign up? There is a sign up genius on the high school website under the counseling link. And there, students have the opportunity. She's here for several, several days over the next two months. 
please take advantage of this. She um, has a ton of experience, especially with those unique and creative supplemental essays that colleges require. She provides kids with amazing feedback. We try to limit it to one session per students just to accommodate as many kids as possible. And she will be working with students in the upper library. So please take advantage of her um, availability. Naviance, I'm sure that you've heard this word a lot over the past three years or so. So why do we talk so much about Naviance? So Naviance is this web service that we have available to all students at the high school, as well as faculty and staff, as well as parents. And um, Ms. Asher and I actually had a meeting with a parent this morning, and that parent mentioned, oh my gosh, I've been using Naviance, and it's so helpful. And we were so impressed, because <laughs> that's what it's there for. It's there to be helpful to students as well as parents. So if it's something that you take the time to navigate and to utilize, we find that it is a really beneficial service for families. And we're very fortunate to have that here in the office. So why do we harp on Naviance so much? Not only does it help students and families learn more about colleges and admission patterns and things of that nature, but it is also the system through which we funnel information to colleges. So that is why we have kids log all of their information on Naviance, where they plan to apply, teacher letters of recommendation. Their responsibility is to complete the application independently, work on those at home, at school, submit those applications, and then at school, how do we support them? We funnel all of the information to schools, whether it's coalition, whether it's common app, through that Naviance system. It's electronic, it's a delivery system. So that I had a student ask me today, I don't understand why we talk about Naviance, and that's because it's our delivery system. So we force kids to use Naviance on a regular basis. Um, please know that we also keep a paper trail of everything. We like to be as thorough and comprehensive as possible. So Mrs. Hancock is our department secretary. She's extremely knowledgeable. Um, she is a point person and a resource for kids as well. We find that we may be busy, especially over lunch periods. I think that tends to be the most busy time for us. If we're not available, a student has a question, she's definitely a great resource for kids as well. But she is the person, she will maintain a paper trail of every application we submit. So not only do we track things through Naviance, that's how we manage things, but also we keep a paper trail as well. Letters of recommendation. So this is something that can be required as part of the process. In addition to the applications and test scores, many schools do require a letter of recommendation. How many are needed or required varies from school to school. It may be none, maybe one. It can be as many as two. So students have been talked to about how to obtain these letters. The process really is first to determine the quantity that is needed. And honestly, it's generally just one or two letters. I know that kids sometimes go into the process thinking, well, I'm going to obtain four or five. And, and that's great in theory, but the reality is, number one, we may only be able to submit one or two letters at most. And secondly, College admission offices don't have the time or energy to dedicate sorting through and reading multiple, multiple letters of recommendation. The reality is they will focus on the one or two that they are asking for. So we really encourage kids to obtain the number that is required by their specific schools. We have these teacher recommendation questionnaires on Naviance that the students have been instructed to complete and give to their teachers after they've had a conversation with them in person. Some teachers, like Mrs. Petit, she has her own system in place, and so if that's the case, then students are to follow her lead in that process. Once the student has had a conversation with the teacher, they've completed their questionnaire, there is a process through Naviance where they submit a request to that teacher, 
And again, why do we do that? It's because it's through Naviance that we funnel all of those recommendations to individual schools. So that's the letter of recommendation process in a nutshell. And we walk this process through with kids on a daily basis. So if they have questions, we can help them very easily. Please know that once a teacher has received that request for a letter through Naviance, it's their cue to then compose the letter and they upload it to the student's account. The students cannot access those letters. They cannot see them. Parents cannot see them. We can see them. So know that those letters of recommendation are confidential, but even though that's the case, please know that teachers are and staff, we are here to support kids and no one is ever going to agree to write a letter if they have something negative to say. It's all about positivity and helping kids um, you know, achieve their goals in terms of the college process. So please trust that even though they are confidential, they are very positive letters. Outside recommenders, so this is um, something relatively new to Common Application. They opened up a process through which students can obtain letters from people outside of the school. So what does that mean? Naviance is a way to manage the teacher letters within the building, the faculty. But in many situations, students may connect with people outside of school. So that may relate to a coach. It may be um, someone who is their supervisor at work. Common App has provided this outside recommenders section so that kids who maybe feel as though teacher doesn't know them as well and they want to have access to someone else to support them in the process, that is managed entirely by the student through Common App. This also relates to staff in the building. So I know that students have asked Ms. Asher and Ms. Rossi for letters of recommendation. We manage the teachers only through Naviance. Anyone else, staff or people outside of the building, including coaches, is through Common App managed by the students. Parent brag sheet, we want to um, welcome your input into the process as much as possible. So Mrs. Cover and I, as part of what we supply to colleges, not only transcripts, not only the school profile, but we also supply personalized information about the students. So you have the opportunity, if you would like to um, share information about your student, you are welcome to do that, and there's a parent brag sheet on Naviance. That is completely confidential. It is nothing that we ever share with any school or university, but that information can be very helpful to us in learning more about students we learn all sorts of really helpful information, things pertaining to your family or an experience your child may have had that we can include in our letter about the student. So if you have the opportunity to complete that, please do so, it's not required. If it's too much of a hassle and you prefer to email us personally, you can certainly do that as well. At this point, Mrs. Cover is gonna talk a little bit about getting through that Naviance process. Okay, so I know for some of you, you've done um, parent brag sheets before um, for your sons or daughters that have graduated. Um, I, Naviance has changed, so I know that some parents were having trouble finding the parent brag sheet, so I just wanted to share some screenshots, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is available on the website if you're trying to fill it out later. So when you log into Naviance, first, where do you find Naviance? You find it on the Chagrin Schools website under the Parents tab. It'll say Naviance, and you can click there and log in. Now, it might have been three years since you've logged in. That's fine. Um, you can still reset your password and do it that way. So when you log in, um, you will see the home screen as it is um, shown up here. And in the top, you'll see, it's hard to see, but you can see switch child. So if you have multiple children in the building, you can just choose from the drop down in the top right corner and choose your um, son or daughter that you're filling out the brag sheet for. So then you'll click on um, the home tab, and it's a little bit different. And you'll go to my surveys. 
And then once you click on My Surveys, you click on surveys you haven't started yet and you'll find the parent brag sheet. So it's just a little bit different way to, with how to find it. Um, and if, again, if you have any problems trying to find it, you can always call the office and we'll walk you through it. Okay, so now moving on to standardized test scores. So something that we've told students um, is that, and colleges require this, that ACT, SAT, and SAT subject test scores are the responsibility of the student and family to send. So you will log on, um, your, your son or daughter will log on to College Board or ACT and send their test scores, um, whatever ones they choose, it can be ACT or SAT or both, um, to the institutions that they're applying to. They should be issued directly from the testing agencies and make sure that this is done in a timely fashion um, because this is a crazy time of year for ACT and College Board, so it's not gonna be an instantaneous send of the scores, so make sure that's done a few weeks in advance. With any fall testing, schools should be selected at the time of registration. So if your son or daughter is taking um, the September ACT or the October SAT, make sure that all of the colleges they're applying to at this point are listed in their account, their online account, to make sure those scores are sent directly right away. And one thing I wanted to add is that colleges are notifying us that if if your son or daughter is applying by the no a November 1st deadline, uh, many schools have an early action deadline of November 1st. Um, the last test scores they will take for that November 1st deadline is the September ACT and the October SAT. So those are the last scores that will be accepted for that November 1st um, early action deadline. It doesn't mean that they can't take any additional tests and submit them later on but those are the last for those um, November 1st early action deadlines. AP test scores can be indicated on the Common Application, but score reports are not needed until your um, child is enrolling in the institu in institution. And again, this is um, part of Common Application or the individual applications, and it's their choice whether or not they want to report their AP scores, um, but again, they don't have to send them from College Board until they're enrolling in the institution. Processing requests. So the process for students is right now they're working on applications. They complete and submit their individual applications and they notify Mrs. Hancock in person to communicate their needs. So we gave students a blue half sheet. You might have seen this laying around um, your child's room. Um, it's a blue half sheet that's a checklist for them to be able to keep track of what steps they need to take. So they need to meet with their counselor. They need to send their test scores, things like that. So they, you can ask them about that when you get home tonight. Um, $2 payment per school is required. So that's our transcript fee for our school to be able to process the transcript. So that would be, you can write a check at one time for all the schools, um, or they can pay individually every time they submit. But that would be going to Mrs. Hancock in the counseling office. In our department, we require 10 school days notifi uh, notification to process all requests. So it would be a mid-October deadline for applications due November 1st. Um, sometimes we have a rush of applications and um, we need to write letters, we need to fill out paperwork and do additional um, special scholarship applications and things like that. So we need 10 school days to be able um, to make sure everything is in and we don't want to miss anything for your son or daughter. So if we know and have that notice, then everything will go just fine. Um, last year, we processed over 1,000 applications for students, and we try to work as quickly as possible because, again, we don't want your son or daughter to miss out on any opportunity um, that they want for their future. So, and I think that number will probably increase this year. I feel like it increases every year. So, just a heads up on that. Release of information. This is another form, so many forms. Um, that we require for students. So this is um, something that we require just so that we will be able to release your son or daughter's educational information. Many students have already completed this release form if they're in College Credit Plus, whether it be with Mr. Stewart um, with the college composition or whether they've taken classes on a local campus. Um, again, this is written authorization to submit confidential information to schools. Um, your son or daughter can sign if they're 18, but they will need a parent signature if they are not 18 yet. And again, we can't send anything until this form is turned into Mrs. Hancock in the counseling office. 
I know Mrs. Newton touched on this before. Um, we have so many admission representatives um, coming to visit us at Chagrin. It's an awesome experience. Um, just remind your son or daughter to be attentive to morning announcements and the posters um, that we have posted around the building. And take advantage of the opportunities to connect with these admissions counselors. Um, just today, like Mrs. Newton said, Miami University was here. Um, and students learned things that they, we wouldn't have known prior because every year admissions policies change with colleges. I feel like little things, little things change every year. So it's good, even if you visited it or the, your son or daughter attended a session maybe during their junior year, it's good to still touch base with that rep and get current information. Mrs. Newton and I try to attend every college visit that comes to the high school. And current visits include Miami today. We have over 15 students attend. We have Canisius, Cedarville, and Tulane. This is all this week. And you can find this list on Naviance as well. And Mrs. Newton said if, if there's, your son or daughter has it um, flagged on their Naviance account, they will get an email reminder. And then these are just some of the visits, but we have, we had over 75 last year um, from different institutions across the country. So we are pretty fortunate. Services for students with disabilities. So if your son or daughter um, has any kind of medical condition or situation where they will need to, re they require any accommodations at the college level, be sure to inquire about services when you're touring and visiting campuses. Uh, maybe you can set up a separate visit while you're there or set something up another time to see what kind of accommodations will be offered. And you must provide that office at the, in, at the college or university with official accommodations plans and updated testing, updated testing after your son or daughter enrolls. And we are also offering a program on Friday, October 19th in the PAC lobby at 8.30 a.m. And we're inviting the University of Akron to come and talk about in general, how um, accommodations work at the college level. And again, this is something that happens during your son or daughter, during the end of your senior year. So like in May, you would contact that office and after they're set up to enroll, you would make an appointment to set up everything so they are start this, their college experience all set up. A few more notes. Please be sure to encourage timeliness your child should work in a timely fashion and avoid procrastination, which I know is a, a tall order at this point. Remember that things do not happen instantaneously. So once your son or daughter submits their application, it takes additional time on the institutional end to update accounts. So you can see in Naviance that think things have been processed through the office. But that college or university might not upload that information for weeks because they're not ready to read it yet. So just know that if you see that it's um, process through our office that sometimes it takes a while. It might happen in a couple hours, it might happen in a couple weeks. Encourage your child to closely monitor email. This is a very important thing. So once they apply, they usually are issued a portal account. Let's say it's, if they apply to OSU, it's a Buckeye account. Um, they need to make sure that they either log into their portal or check their email on a regular basis, including spam. Universities can track emails, and if students open emails and read them, so it's very important that they don't ignore any kind of email from the college or university they're applying to. They might be notifying them that they're missing ACT scores. Um, it might be, oh, we're missing one more piece of your application. So that's very important to remind them of. And also, when, you find, when your son or daughter finds out about if they got into a school or they didn't get into a school, whatever the case may be, make sure they communicate with us. We love to hear about um, the good things that happen, and then create game plans if it's not how they wanted things to turn out. So just make sure that they communicate with us to let us know, and we like to hear about it regardless. Um, coming up next, um, we have Renee Morgan from the Lake and Geauga Educational Assistance Foundation. Some of you might have met her already. She is our representative that um, offers financial aid counseling. Um, at Chagrin Falls High School. She has availability on Tuesdays throughout the school year, and her office is located in the upper library. If you want to schedule an appointment, you can call Jan Hancock, our go-to lady in the counseling office to schedule an appointment, and she will meet with all senior students at least once during the year. She works tirelessly to try to track kids down to make sure they are aware of every opportunity um, 
for financial aid. And also, she's available for phone and email communication. Her email is listed on this presentation and phone number. We also have it posted on the counseling website so you can access if you have you know, some questions about the FAFSA, the CSS profile. Okay, and now, here's Renee Morgan. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Renee Morgan. I know I've met some of you, so um, thank you for, just I tell the students the same thing. You know, you get through all of this information, including, you know, your senior year, and you have all of this application, and wait, there's one more thing. So just when you thought the speakers were done, wait, there's one more speaker. And, but I will, I'll be quick because I kind of want to tease something that we're doing for the first time um, at Sugar and Falls where we're actually going to have a specific night dedicated to financial aid. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so just LEAF, just so you know, is a nonprofit college access organization. We serve a variety of schools in Lake Geauga and Cuyahoga counties. We have information sessions up in Kirtland. We have a database of scholarships. We mail newsletters. You may have hopefully received some, a senior newsletter. The students have received some Latin newsletters, some handouts. I know we try to go paperless, but sometimes you need to have that list of websites in front of you to take a look at some things. So we do a variety of things, including fee waivers for admissions applications for um, students that are um, in need of that. So um, as Mrs. Coper said, I'm here every Tuesday of the first semester. Um, I, you can email me directly. My cards actually are in the back as well as um, my sign-up sheet. So if you right now know you want to talk to me for a little bit, um, I know you have a very busy schedule this evening, but please sign up for an appointment on some Tuesday. I'm happy to sit down individually with students and parents, just parents, however you want to start the process. Um, but I do um, not only talk about financial aid in in general, but also specifically do file FAFSAs with certain families in some situations. I know there's lots of questions as to, the, a FAFSA, I'm going to back up a little bit, is the free application for federal student aid. It's the first step um, for need-based financial aid and on occasion merit-based financial aid. So people always, that's the number one question I get, should I really fill out this form, how long does it take, it's so painful, and I have seen situations where merit-based aid has been triggered. Um, or they've been eligible for, or it's been a last minute scramble because they didn't have it on file. So I do recommend doing it once. Um, the best student loans are available through that process as well. So I know people are always, oh my gosh, it's just more paperwork for this whole process. I, I say do it once if nothing happens after the freshman year eligibility, you don't have to submit it for three more years, but um, it's an option. And as I did say, I will go over the whole process if you want to see the whole thing, and I do recommend it for students, and I know it's marketed kind of as a senior night, but I know at other schools, we've been doing it at Kenston for 10 or 12 years, and we have sophomores and juniors in attendance, because you almost kind of need to hear this vocabulary multiple times, so it's not that intimidating, because it's really not. Um, again, so feel free to contact me for anything individual. I will send for all seniors to come and see me. Some are different points in the process. They're so trying to figure out if they're going to take the ACT again versus trying to figure out how they're going to pay for it. But we introduce the vocabulary and talk about the differences between a grant and a loan, and most of them know, but I just want to make sure they know they have to pay back a loan. Um, but it's just a, a check-in conversation um, about, the, about how that all works. Um, you can't do anything right now um, with the financial aid process, specifically regards to the FAFSA, with the exception of getting a username and password. Um, your student needs one, and you need one. Um, one parent, and you can go ahead and get that on the website listed, which is fsa.ed.gov. Um, another thing you can do, um, or your student can do, uh, is to check the necessity. There's something called the FAFSA. All, st all schools require the FAFSA. Um, the CSS profile is, a, is a, an additional layer. For some of the more selective schools require that. Instead of one year of financial information, it's three years of financial information. It's more painful, I'm not going to lie. But it is um, just part of the process for uh, in the list of schools, you can Google it fairly simply, um, and I can, or I can provide it if you have any questions. Um, but you cannot do anything regards to the FAFSA, with the exception of the username and password, until October 1st. But come October 1st, um, your student can go ahead and submit um, the information, one parent submit information, um, and you go from there and it all starts. Um, what is involved in the FAFSA, and I'm not going to list it all out, but it's basically 2017. It's your financial picture in 2017. Um, if, for those of you who have done it in the past, they're used to, it, the numbers have changed, but now what they do is they look back, they start the process October 1st, not January 1st, 
Um, but it's going to take for the 2019-2020 school year, which is when your students will hopefully all be freshmen, um, they'll be looking at the 2017 tax information. Um, and it's fairly straightforward. There's a retrieval system for the IRS where you input your social security number and it's not like you have to have all your files stacked up. But you do need to know um, your current asset levels for a variety of different things. Uh, but what is not included on the FAFSA are things like the value of your home, um, retirement funds. They don't expect you to sell your house and not retire in order to send your child to college. But um, there's a lot of other information that the, the schools want to know in order to make a, make a decision based upon whether or not, you know, how much aid to provide to your, to your student. Um, after the file of FAFSA, there's a lot of things that happen, but basically um, what I tell the students is I know it's really hard to be patient in this process, but sometimes you have more information. I know like the minute they get the acceptance letter, they want to say, all right, I'm going, it's a done deal. Um, but on occasion, I've seen trickles of money that happens. Not all the time, I can't guarantee this is gonna happen, but on occasion where a, school, a student, once they receive uh, an application, as well as the financial aid information from all of their students that have been accepted, the pockets of money change. And so there was a student who like <laughs> every month, they're like, I got another scholarship, Mrs. Morgan. I said, well, wow, that's amazing and great. But and if she had made the decision to not go to that school, in um, October, she wouldn't have known that come March. So I say it's, you know, if you want, if you're making the decision, some kids know it's not going to change anything, but I do say patience can be helpful in this process. It's not always the case, but I've seen it happen. So I just try to, you know, everybody take a breath and, and that's just a little tidbit that I've seen happen in the past. Um, but just checking email, checking financial aid websites, making sure you're seeing deadlines. Typically, the FAFSA is due um, somewhere between November 15th and January 1st for schools. So everybody needs to get through the application process first. And then, you know, you and your family can think, you know, the student can think about the concept of the financial aid process. But it's something to not forget about. Um, as, I, as I've already said, username and password, um, checking deadlines. Um, you can send the FAFSA to up to 10 colleges. It's pretty straightforward um, if that list of 10 changes or if they have 15, maybe do the top 10. And then if something changes, it's, it's pretty straightforward to switch it out. Um, and it's all free, so it's not like the test scores where you have to pay per school. Um, and the other option, of course, scholarships or things that students are always going to be hopefully looking for. Um, the most money you'll ever get will be from the institution itself, but individual outside scholarships can help. Um, and most of, or all of those that are received through the school are all posted on Naviance. So that's their best. People always ask, where should I look for scholarships? And there's so many different ways to search, but really, um, Naviance is the best site. We also, at LEAF, have a, web, a, have a database um, as well. So, and there will be specific scholarships to chagrin, chagrin schools that typically come out at the end of the semester for like a February 1st deadline. So, and they'll hear all about that later in this time. Um, so that's my contact information. And if you have any um, specific needs to see me sooner rather than later, I'm here next Tuesday. And you can sign up for a time um, tonight. It's just a binder back there. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. I don't know timing wise. So we will be in the high school library if you would like to stop by and ask any questions or if you need help accessing Naviance, we are there to support you. But I know Ms. Asher um, will be speaking next, I think, at 7 o'clock. So thank you to everyone. I hope everyone has a smooth and successful school year. Thank you.